morning. It's uh, great to be here with you again in another Facebook uh, live streaming event. We wish we could all be here in the sanctuary together, but uh, at least God gives us this opportunity to come together in this manner, and we are just so thankful for that. Uh, regrettably, we, we had to cancel everything again this week. Uh, all of our services uh, today, uh, Wednesday services, Bible study and choir practice have been canceled. And the band trip that uh, we had uh, planned for Friday to Morgantown has been canceled as well. Uh, this is something that uh, has been prayerfully considered by uh, the deacons here at the church on what we need to do. And it's a difficult decision, but uh, it's something that's necessary at this time. Uh, we just pray that uh, this live streaming event will in some way be a blessing to each one of you this morning. And uh, we're hopeful that we can continue to provide this live streaming of our services once uh, we get back in the sanctuaries on Sunday morning. It's already been two weeks, and uh, it, it seems like an eternity at this point. Uh, just uh, keep it, everything in your prayers. Keep the church in your prayers, one another in your prayers. Uh, looking at the announcements today, as I told you earlier about all the cancellations, but I'd like to remind you as well that uh, we have some volunteers at the church that have uh, volunteered to help people that uh, may have a need. If you do, if you need some groceries picked up or medication picked up, uh, those type of things, anything that we can help with here at the church, we have volunteers that would be uh, willing to do that and as long as we have the resources to do that we'll continue to do that as long as uh, we're permitted to do those things for those of you that have asked about tithing uh, you can mail your tithe here to the church at uh, 132 East 2nd Street or you can also uh, pay your tithes uh, make any donations and offerings online in one of three ways and those ways are posted in our bulletin, which is on uh, the Facebook page and the web page. Prayer concerns. Uh, the prayer concerns are listed in the bulletin that is posted uh, on the pages as well, Facebook and our um, web page. Uh, if there's anyone that needs added or uh, removed from the prayer list here at the church, we just uh, ask that you would call the church office or call or text me and let me know so that we can get those names added or removed from our list. We need to remember all of those that have uh, been affected by this virus, uh, whether direct, directly uh, as someone who's been diagnosed with it or those affected by it, which is everybody uh, here in the country and across the globe. We need to remember the ones that are working on a cure and a vaccine and we need to remember the world leaders, our own leaders, our local leaders. We need to remember them in prayer as well. And don't forget your church family and your own families. We've just, uh, we've got so many needs, so many uh, hurting right now. And uh, I just remember them in your uh, prayers as well. If you would, uh, let's bow our heads for just a moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're, we're so thankful Lord, to be here and be able to share your word this morning. Father, we, we thank you for your blessings of this week. We thank you for sustaining us through this week, through this difficult time. Father, uh, I thank you for the faith that your church has. And I pray that uh, they would remain faithful. And Father, that uh, you would just uh, be with each one of us. That uh, you would build that hedge of protection around each one of us, Father. Protect us not only from the virus, but from all those things, Father, associated with it that uh, are so difficult for many of us to go through. Father, just uh, be with your church. Father, uh, bless us, and love us, and protect us. And Father, go with us uh, today in this uh, broadcast. Father, I just pray that the words that uh, you give me would be uplifting to someone that they would open uh, their hearts and their minds and be receptive to you, Father. I pray that faith would be restored, and I pray if there's one there that doesn't know you, that's listening today, Father, I just pray that uh, you would touch them, and I pray, Father, that they would give their heart to you. 
These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I know that uh, many of you, and actually all of us, are, are dealing with a situation that, uh, well, we've never been through before. And uh, it's difficult. And it's uh, a grim picture. And it seems like every time that there's a, a press conference by a president or a governor, uh, the news just gets more difficult to hear. And there's so much uncertainty. There's, there's so much we don't know that they don't know. And uh, there's many hurting. There's many being afflicted here in our own country. Uh, we have more here in West Virginia. Families are being touched by this every day. And people are dying from this as well. And we just, uh, we just have to remain faithful. We just have to remain faithful. When we, and we have to put God first. And we, and we have to use this time that uh, we're stuck in our homes and away from our businesses and, and other places. We have to use this time to focus on Christ. If we, uh, we can't let the fear get to us and the greed and the selfishness that have, uh, that have been shown by some people, uh, the scams that are taking place already, and many of our uh, elderly are vulnerable and, and, and many of the younger people are vulnerable to this as well. And there's loss of jobs. There's loss of income. Some cases, health insurance is being lost by families. Retirement accounts are slipping away. And then the things that uh, we've taken for granted for so long. Those things like milk and bread and bathroom tissue and things that we've uh, just been able to purchase at our will. It's impossible to find some of these things in our stores. And finally, many of our freedoms, freedoms that we have enjoyed since this country was formed, are being temporarily withheld by travel bans and, and forced business and government closures by quarantines. We've just never seen anything like this before. As our government leaders and the, the medical community struggle to contain the spread and find a cure for this disease, we're left to deal with the fear and the anxiety that uh, this health crisis has created. But we as Christians are not alone in this. Right? I mean, God, God has this battle for us. Do you believe that today? I hope you do. My hope is that you do. Over the past few weeks, I've, I've heard several people quote uh, different scriptures, and, and I've seen them post different scriptures and inspirational quotes on Facebook, and uh, they, ref they refer to fear and doubt and anxiety and how we can conquer that all relate to turning our fears and our insecurities over to God. God has this. I know you've often heard and seen these verses, and many of you have shared them as well, and I've done the same thing myself. And there's nothing wrong with it unless, unless we share these things and, and we ourselves don't actually believe them. Or at least our actions indicate that what we say and what we do and what we believe are separate things. If we profess our faith, faith in God, we can't stay awake all night worrying about, are we going to catch this flu and what are we going to do when it happens? If we profess our faith in God, we can't constantly wring our hands and pace the floor worrying what business what government is going to shut down next? And if we profess our faith in God, we can't post inspirational quotes on Facebook and then turn around and call our friends and just uh, pour out crying and despair about our life situations. If we are going to turn it over to God, we need to turn it all over to God. And that's tough to do, but that's the only way. And it's such a relief when you can finally do that. Why do we have fear? Why are we so anxious about life? Why do we doubt God? The unknown scares us. 
by nature, we want to be in control. The unknown takes that ability from us. What we need to learn is that the unknown to us is known to God. Things in life surprise us. They catch us off guard. But nothing catches God off guard. When things look bleak to us and God doesn't appear to be answering our prayers, God knows our suffering. And he does hear our cries. And yes, he is working in divine ways that benefit his people. If we look at Romans 8.28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. But sometimes, like our current pandemic situation, doubts begin to form in our mind, and our hope and our faith fades away. When the news gets more grim with each passing day, our sacrifices and suffering increase, our prayers look as if they're going unanswered, what do we do? The prophet Habakkuk felt the kind of pain in our text for today. And although prophets normally brought the word of God to the people, they also took the concerns of the people to God. Habakkuk was a little different, though. He was a lot like Job. He had no problem confronting God about the issues, but he was still a little different. He questioned God's actions, and in the text we are looking at today, he questioned God's apparent inaction. As we shall soon learn, Habakkuk took his concerns, along with the concerns of the people, back to God in a series of questions. God answered, and what he told him is just as true for us today as it was back then. If you have your Bibles with you, I'll give you a second to turn to uh, the book of Habakkuk, and we'll look at chapter 1, and we'll be reading verses 1 through 5. Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. Excuse me just a second. <laughs> I lost my place. The law is paralyzed and the justice never prevails. The wicked him and the righteous so that justice is perverted. Look at the nations and watch. And this is God's answer. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. May God give us understanding in the reading of his word. Can you relate to Habakkuk's lamentation this morning? He doesn't mention any direct personal suffering or injustice, but he has seen enough of both of these things occurring to his people, and he's grieved by what he sees. Habakkuk has been crying out to God for deliverance. He's been crying for deliverance from the suffering, from the acts of violence, from the destruction, but he feels that God is a turned a deaf ear to his cries and his prayers. He accuses God of not listening and not saving them from their suffering. The faith of Habakkuk and the righteous people of Israel is waned. Habakkuk accuses God of tolerating the evil that is being done and of not taking action against the transgressors. Sometimes when our faith is challenged, we may begin to doubt God as well. 
Most of us have, have had our faith challenged in recent days due to our current situation. If we look at God's answer, we may find something that applies to us today in today's world as well as it did back in Habakkuk's time. From verse 5, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. God tells Habakkuk to watch and be amazed. God tells him that it would do no good to tell him what he is doing or going to do because he would never believe it. Habakkuk could never comprehend the works of God. God is doing the same thing today. Even when we don't see his hand, he is at work in our lives and our world. We can never fully understand his wisdom. We can never fully understand his works. We can never fully understand his love for us, but we can trust him. And remember the verse that I shared with you earlier from Romans 8? And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. There are two important points that I want you to remember from what I've shared with you so far this morning. First, just because we don't see God working in a situation doesn't mean that he isn't working in that situation. Many things are hidden from our eyes because we don't have the wisdom and we don't, <coughs> excuse me, and we don't have the wisdom to see God's handiwork. The second thing that is in all things, God is working for our good. For the good of those people that truly love God. So regardless of our situation, regardless of how bad it appears to us, God is in control. God has not turned his back on us during this corona epidemic. He has not thrown his arms in the air and gave up on us. He is absolutely working through the situation for the benefit of his people, the church. As Christian, as Christians, with this knowledge, with this assurance, we have no choice, no good choice, but to respond with a renewed faith. And our faith must be demonstrated by our actions. If our actions don't match our words, we may be fooling ourselves, we may be fooling others, but we're not fooling God. My prayer is that each one of you listening this morning has that faith. If you do, this is just the beginning, because we know that God is working for the good in all things. The current worldwide health crisis is obviously a challenge to the faith of Christians everywhere. It's a challenge, but more importantly, it's a faith builder for the church. Christians worldwide are united in spirit and in prayer. The church has an opportunity to grow spiritually and witness to the world in a way that has not been seen for generations. In sermons earlier this month, I spoke to you about witnessing and taking advantage of situations that open doors for us to share the gospel. We have an opportunity today that we cannot ignore. People everywhere are sick, suffering, afraid, and dying. Sadly, most are facing this crisis without Jesus, and many more are dying without Jesus. It's tough sometimes with Jesus. How in the world can anyone face life today not knowing Jesus Christ? Yes, we must be smart and we must use caution around this disease. But we must live our faith daily, serve others, and share the good news. In your prayers this week, ask God to, to help you remain faithful. And ask him to show you how you can serve others during this difficult and stressful time. Then by all means, 
Go and honor God as he leads you. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. And Father, I just pray that uh, these words that you put on my lips were met, Father, by ears that were receptive to what you had to say. I just pray, Father, that you would give your church strength, that you would renew our faith, that we would see that your hand is in everything. We are not lost. We are not without a God. Father, I thank you. I praise you. Father, you, you've, you've been so good to us. And Father, I know you'll see us through this. Father, bless those that have listened to this this morning. And Father, I just pray that uh, all that can will do the things that you would have them do. That will, will be obedient to your word, Father, as we go out and serve others and share the good news. Father, be with us all this week. I just pray that hedge of protection around each one. I pray, Father, that uh, your will be done in each one of our lives. And Father, all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good week. If you need anything that the church can help you with, please call the church office or call or text me. And uh, we'll do everything we can to help you. Keep the faith. Move forward. Share the good news. God bless.